Hello everyone, Andrew here, and I want to talk to you today about the the housing market crash that we're experiencing, what's causing this housing market crash, and basically, you know, how this all ties together with inflation and the higher interest rates, what's causing that, what's behind it, and what's going to happen, and how that's going to affect um, not only your paycheck, but whether or not you're going to get a paycheck. Now, just a couple of weeks ago, I did a video about the uh, what was called the mortgage per purchase application, which is kind of an indicator of housing in um, housing activity. And that's actually last month it uh, declined to its lowest level in 25 years. And what, what that just means is people are not applying for new mortgages. So home buyers are just, just getting out of the market. They're not applying for new mortgages, meaning the housing is crashing. Not only that, but just as a real estate agent, I'm seeing longer days on market, prices coming down, it's crashing. And it's not just, just crashing, but it's coming to a standstill. And unfortunately, this is all by design. This is by design of the Federal Reserve. Um, Chairman Jerome Powell, who interestingly enough, makes $226,000 per year. And he's worth an estimated over an estimated $20 million. Okay. And he calls these interest rate hikes a difficult correction is what he calls them. It's a difficult correction. Well, to someone that makes over 225000 a year and has a net worth of over $20 million, it's probably not a real difficult correction for him. It's not really going to affect his pocketbook, his daily life. Um, it is going to pr protect or protect. It is going to affect my daily life and your daily life because um, what we're seeing is, again, we have this, this record high inflation going on right now. Well, not record high, but higher than we've seen in 40 years, inflation going on right now. And yes, that's a terrible thing. But in my opinion, I don't know that just raising the interest rates to crash us into a recession is the answer to that. This problem has happened because the government spent too much money. There's no other way around that. What happened was, you know, and people say, well, and I'll explain this a little bit, but when we had COVID and people were forced to not go to work, they shut everything down and people didn't go to work. And we gave people extra money to stay home. In fact, we paid them more. I mean, in a lot of cases, people got paid more to stay home than what they were making going to work. And so even when they started opening back up, this policy was still in place and people were staying home. And people are like, well, yeah, that, but that's gone now. That's not happening anymore. But what happened was employers that still needed employees had to pay them more to get them to come back to work. So the wages went up, which is great. I'm not, not against wages going up at all. But unfortunately, wages have not gone up as high as inflation have. But inflation was caused by those wages going up. Very simply, if you were paying someone $15 an hour to do a job and you couldn't get anyone to do that job because nobody wanted to come back to work, so you raised that pay to $20 an hour, now you had to raise your prices. Even though more people are coming into the job market, that person's still getting paid $20 per hour. They're not getting a pay cut now that there's more people coming back into the labor market. So the Fed has decided the way they will do that is what they call demand destruction. They will raise the interest rates until the inflation goes down. And what their plan is, again, they call it demand destruction. It starts with the housing industry. And I have always said that housing and small businesses are the backbone of the American economy. They are the backbone of it. And we're seeing already now that new home starts have gone down significantly. Home sales have gone down significantly. And what that means is, with that demand destruction is, if people stop building homes, not only are the construction workers going to be out of jobs that um, they were doing because they're no longer building that home. But now you don't need the air conditioner for the house. You don't need the new furnace for the house. You don't need the new appliances for the house. You don't need all the lumber that was going to go in the house. So all of those prices are going to start dropping because the demand is not for them any there anymore. But it's going to throw us into a recession because what happens when you don't need the air conditioner and you don't need the furnace? The person making that furnace is going to get laid off. That's what's going to happen. That's how the economy works. So as these interest rates continue to rise, you're going to see the labor market, and which is what they want. I mean, they, the, the Fed has said in no uncertain terms that they want a weaker labor market, and they believe that a weaker labor market will um, pause this inflation. 
But what it's going to do, it's going to put us in a recession because they're only handling one problem of it. They're just saying, well, if we raise these interest rates, we can bring the inflation down. But what's going to happen again, you're going to cause a recession. You're going to cause an employment. So when I said in the beginning, is it going to affect your paycheck and my paycheck? Well, sure it is. It's going to affect everybody's paycheck and whether or not they even get a paycheck because people are going to lose their jobs because of this. And this really goes down to, again, the government has been spending too much money. We are running such a deficit right now, bigger than we ever have in history, and they just continue to spend money, pass more things that spend money. Now, I'm not saying that we don't need some of these programs and, and maybe these some of these programs have the advantages of, but you look at it this way. Our country is already so far in debt, we're broke. If the average person was in, in debt as far as the federal government is, the last thing we would do is go out and spend more money. Now, their answer is, let's go spend more money and tax people more. If you really look at the Inflation Reduction Act, as they call it, um, it really is a massive tax increase. When you look, when you really look at the numbers and see where the money is coming from, it's a massive tax increase. It's a massive, massive tax increase on corporations. And what that's also going to do is it's going to literally come directly out of their profits. They want to tax them so much there won't be any profits left. When that happens, they look ways to start cut corners. They start laying people off, and there's even a bigger recession happening. So these interest rates hikes are not only affecting directly people's ability to get a mortgage because, of, again, they just can't afford to get a mortgage now, but it's going to affect a trickle down into all other parts of the economy, cause a re recession by weakening the job market. And the, I guess the part that upsets me the most about it is they they've just stated that's their goal. They want a weaker job market. They want more people unemployed because that will bring down inflation. Maybe. We don't even know if that will bring down inflation, but what would bring down inflation is our government to quit spending so much money. It's absolutely amazing how much money our government is spending that we don't have. And the only place they can get it from is from the taxpayers. So again, Unfortunately, this is not a very positive video. I see a recession coming because I already see it happening in the housing market. And it, uh, is, it's and it's going to get a lot worse before it gets better. Uh, I wish I had better news for you, but hey, let's, we're all in this together. So let's get through it together. Thank you.